Hello everybody, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Thank you for being here. I hope it's a good day wherever you are. The uh, sun is shining here. It's a beautiful spring, snowy spring day. Hope that uh, all is well. <clears throat> Today I want to talk to you about two words that have very different meanings and, and powerful uh, implications for our lives. It's based on an article by one of our um, bloggers named Eileen Marcus. And her, her article was called, Want to get more from life? Stop pushing and start pulling. And that's, those are the two words, push and pull. And I think that throughout our lives, we've been really focused on push, you know, pushing towards a goal, pushing towards um, an image of what we thought our lives would be as we were, as we get older, you know, like, in, and as we, as you know, as a teenager, you're pushing towards achieving a college degree or getting educated or getting your skills. And then you push towards a career. And then even within the career, getting, you know, pushing up the, up the ladder and, and making, getting promotions and moving forward. It's always with a goal to getting towards an end. And it's effort. It's 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 hard. It's um it's you know it's a struggle sometimes. And I think the thing that Eileen talks about, which is which is powerful as you get older, is making that distinction between push and pull. And pulling is uh, a different um, art. It's the art of attraction. It's pulling things towards you with your energy, with your with your who who you are, with your passions, with your with your desires, and. Attraction is, as we, we all know, we've all read the book, haven't we? The Power of Attraction um, is, is, is more powerful in that it doesn't have, we kind of surrender our, ourselves to, to it. And, and, and we all talk about the, you know, the universe helps us, you know, to guide us through these things. But it's, it, we are the universe and we are the thing that's pulling towards us, the, the, the things we desire. So using a strategy um, of attraction or promotion has always been the way that, you know, people have marketed items and, and lifestyle products. You know, if you think about some of the, um, you know, the sports um, advertising, like the, you know, just do it. It's all about um, an, an apple. You know, our brand will help you to become this. It will transform you. It will help you. Um, it will pull, um, you know, the, the goodness in the universe <laughs> that's, that that's, uh, you identify with our brand into your life. So marketing, marketers have always known that this has worked. And maybe that's something that you've uh, fallen not, well, not victim, but I've, you know, fallen into this somehow, um, if I buy that thing or if I buy that item, I will then be the person that I want to be. That will be, um, in a way, it's a push. It's, it's sort of pushing something that is you never had before in your life, pu pushing it, you know, t towards you. But, but here's some of the five things that Eileen talks about that are, you know, that differentiate and make it really important to focus on pulling promoting rather than pushing and I think that they're they're very useful so the first thing is push too hard and you will repel you know pushing too hard will always um you know uh, the thing that you're trying to uh, trying to gain or trying to accomplish will, will be rejected think about it in terms of relationships and I think Eileen talks about um the hallmark cards there's that famous card about if you love something set it free if it comes back it's yours if it wasn't, it was always meant to be. And I think that's a really powerful uh, quote because it's basically saying if you if you keep you know manipulating and pushing and trying and ma uh, manipulating, you will just eventually push it away. So embrace it. Put the elements in your energy together that pull something towards you and then it will come. If it stays, then it was meant to be. If not, let it go let it be, be authentic. And the things um, that, you know, will be drawn naturally to you. If you, if you know who you are and what you want from life, those things will naturally come to you. Trust the process. This is a really hard one because I think you always want, you know, next day shipping and even that's not enough. You know, you want to keep getting things immediately. Good. I mean, they, and of course, another saying that like, good things come to those who wait. I think that's another element of, of of pushing or pulling rather than pushing if you every day get up and you try to push you know towards a goal push towards an end you will just get tired and exhausted if you pull the energy towards you it will it will come but not always as fast as you want so I think that's really important and it kind of gets back to that same thing that things will unfold as they're meant to and I'm not saying be passive you know like just sort of lay back and wait for things to happen but I think it's a, a simple thing of knowing that it may take time and and actually this is really a good example when you're talking about losing weight or or even um you know gaining some wisdom or or even reading a book you've got to kind of give it time you've got to be patient and not 
um, not push. Stay mission focused is the, is the next thing. Trust the process, but don't not do anything. Take action every day towards to move towards your dream. And then ask yourself at the end of the day, what, what did I accomplish to, today that was moving towards my goal? Maybe taking losing weight is a good example of that. You know, you're not going to lose 20 pounds over a night or a week or even a month, you know, but you are going to improve your eating habits. So you're going to change your, your lifestyle to make that, uh, you know, your body more efficient in burning calories. And then you're going to, you're actually going to lose the weight that you want. But, you know, whatever it takes to attract that thing to you, do it. But don't, you know, don't, don't do it in a way that is like non-active. So for example, uh, Eileen gives this, I'm looking at my notes. She gave this um, example. She wanted to become a blogger. She wanted to write and she does write for us, of course, now, but she, she actually, that was her goal. And she, so she said at the end of the day, she would ask herself, um, you know, what did she do to, to move towards the goal of becoming published author? And she said, first of all, she would say, well, I wrote this article or I wrote a draft of this article. I did four outreach calls. I phoned four or sent emails to four people that I thought might be interested in my writing and I updated my Twitter page. That was her three things she did in order to pull towards her um, some um, editor or writer or book or, or magazine that wanted her writing. She didn't just sit there and go, I want to be a writer. I really wish that somebody would find me. They're not going to knock on your door, right? So that's the next thing is to stay mission focused. Hone the nothing skill. And I thought this is, a, I was, when I first read that, it was like, hone the nothing skill. And it was very true because basically what she's saying is own, uh, own and hone the art of doing nothing. You know, of just basically sending an, a message out and then just relaxing. It's not like, it's not the same as just like, you know, being active and then waiting all the time. It's basically the art of letting things unfold. I just think there's such a subtle difference there. And, you know, when push and pull are, don't seem, either one seems to be working, you have to somehow learn the art of calm meditation that can help, breathing, all kinds of relaxation techniques. Maybe just sit with a cup of coffee and just, let, you know, listen to the birds, you know, listen to some audio books, whatever. There is, as she says, stillness and serenity and serenity does give you peace. And I think that in some ways, if we're pulling things towards us in a, in a positive way, we sometimes do get intense. You know, we get determined, like we really want it to happen. We can't live without it. We have to have that thing. And I'm not going to push, but I'm going oh, to do everything I can to get it towards me. And that in itself can be harmful. So that art of doing nothing is, uh, is important too. The other thing that um, she talks about, I think this is number seven. I don't know if, if these are numbered, but it's the art of staying um, away from the main stage. It's not always about you. You know, if you really want something um, and you want to bring that into your life, you just, <clears throat> you don't always want to be going, to, you know, directly for the thing that's going to put you in the spotlight. You know, it's like, it's all about me. Oh, I can do that. That Bring that to me. I want that job. I can do this. I'm you know, this and this and this. You can list all your skills, but, <clears throat> but it's not all about you. It's about helping other people to lift up too. And I think that that's very powerful because in doing that, helping others, you help yourself, you make, you make contacts. How many times have you wanted something and, you know, really desired it and then it just didn't come to you, but you then went out to, you know, a meeting or joined a community activity or a meetup or something. And then you met someone who was like, oh, I know that person or I know that thing. I have a contact there, would you like? And then suddenly, because you gave yourself to other, another person, you then get something back for yourself. So basically it's, it's, a, it's an art, it's an art of push and pull. It's not just one or the other. You've got to be firm and move forward and want things and, and desire them and get them. At the same time, you've got to kind of hold back and relax, help others, you know, assess whether it's something you really want. You know, be honest with yourself. And we said at the very beginning, you know, that you've got to be authentic. Once you're in your authentic self, you then can pull things to you that align with that. I think it's really, really powerful. So can you share with us in your life a, a situation where you pushed instead of pulled and didn't get what you wanted or pulled instead of pushed and found things coming to you that you needed? I think it's an art. I think it's an art to develop. And I, I don't know whether any of you can share some stories that will help others who maybe have felt a bit discouraged because they've maybe tried to pull things, you know, they've done the speaking to the universe thing, hasn't happened. And maybe what you could, they could, they could do that might, push it along 
in a subtle way and pull it to them at the same time. Push and pull. Fabulous article. Really, really thoughtful. Hope that you find some value in this and it's the insight gives you inspiration to actually move forward and, and do some things. How did you uh, deal with a situation where you had to make a push and pull action? Look forward to hearing your comments and sharing. Have a really fabulous day, everybody. I love you so, oh, so much. You know this and um, you are respected and, and, and admired and I welcome you here so much. If you do like to support 60 Me, by the way, we have a Patreon group. It's called patreon.com slash 60 and me. We do uh, exclusive videos, we do uh, live shows, and people are meeting each other. So if you are looking to meet other women in our 60 and me community, we, we don't have like groups or, you know, local local groups or anything, but we do have our, our, our friendship lounges that we have as part of our Patreon supporters group. So thank you for being here. If you enjoyed the video, please like it, give us a thumbs up and join and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. I do four videos every week and you can press the notification bell so you know when they are being published and just know how much I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Take care.